of the 1001 afternoons that Ben Hecht spent in Chicago, you can bet that quite a few were spent here at this very large Victorian in Hyde Park. In the early 1920s, when Hecht was in his early 20s, he lived in this rooming house for a few years. It had been built in the 1860s. He's here in the 20s. And during the period he was here, he accomplished several things. He had his first play produced in New York. He's writing his column called 1001 Afternoons in Chicago for the Daily News. He leaves the Daily News and starts his own newspaper. And he's building up his friendship with Charles MacArthur, with whom he wrote the front page. Classic Chicago comedy that leads to his career in New York and Hollywood. His fingerprints are on everything from the first gangster films to Gone with the Wind, Wuthering Heights. He may even have ghostwritten Marilyn Monroe's autobiography. But his career gets started in Chicago when he's living here. The house is now for sale. When we go inside, you'll see it's in a slightly difficult condition. The elderly former residents of the house have moved on and the house is being emptied for a, for a buyer. But it, it's got some great vintage details that we'll see as soon as we get inside. Much of the vintage detail is concentrated here in the foyer, which looks very much as it would have when Hecht was here, and probably when the house was original in the 1860s. You start with this great welcoming fireplace in the front hall, all intact, this beautiful tile and the woodwork above. Next to it is this bay where they have a grand piano, it's got the nice wood framing of the windows and the paneling below. These light fixtures above are believed to be original. They probably were gas converted to electricity. It's believed they've been here ever since the beginning, as have, of course, the beams and the wainscoting. There are an awful lot of great details intact, including the stained glass here behind me, and the glass up on the landing is intact but slightly changed. If you look, you'll see when the glass was reinstalled, it was put in in the wrong order. The largest of the three ought to be in the middle, but is off to the side. So there's a little bit of alteration to the condition of the house. The house is, by the way, not in ideal shape right now because the owners are no longer here. The house is being cleaned, emptied, for the next buyers to come in. But what you've got is this very large room, probably a, originally a pair of rooms, when the parlors would have been smaller. But you've got this expanse for a living room from the gorgeous original glass on one end and the brick fireplace to this bay of windows beneath very high ceilings. And we'll see upstairs in the bedrooms, they have very high ceilings as well. Lots of vintage wood intact, including these really great pocket doors which opened to the dining room to reveal this gorgeous old sideboard. Great condition, nice woodwork, beautiful tile, columns and mirrors, all probably original like the beams. This is a great room or can be with some renovations. The one thing we're not doing is looking at the kitchen down here. It is quite dated and you'll need to build something new. There's a lot of space there for a big kitchen and eat-in dining room. And in the bedrooms upstairs, we'll see there's quite a bit of room there as well. On the second and third floor are all the bedrooms and some smaller rooms. Remember, it was built as a boarding house, so there are nine bedrooms in all. Some of them still have original shaving sinks. This one at the front of the third floor has a lot of its Victorian wood trim intact. You'd need to clean it up, but here it is in place. Another great Victorian detail would be this turret. It's so nice to have that as the living space to be able to actually be inside that curved room. All over the second and third floor, there are porches, there are balconies, there are turrets, there are lots of eccentric spaces. And speaking of eccentric spaces, you've got the top floor of the house here, the fourth floor, formerly the attic. If the rest of the house looks like the 1920s, this probably feels a little bit more like the 1960s with the greenhouse roof, the mirrors, and the checkerboard tile. These greenhouse roofs, though, create, bring in an awful lot of sun into this space. It's a pretty terrific place to hang out especially right here where I plan to spend my 1,002nd afternoon in Chicago.